Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Just Say Gway. I'm your host, George Gway. Today, I'm joined by Jason Russell Rowe of the Columbus Crew, who just made his MLS debut. Jason, congratulations. I'm sure you've heard that a lot in the last few days. Uh, and welcome to the show. Thanks. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, so as all this all uh, sunk in, you know, the last couple of years, you've uh, been playing at the University of Maryland. Uh, you sign uh, with the Columbus crew uh, on a contract, and then you make your debut. Is it really all sunk in? I mean, the last couple of days, I'm, I'm still trying to get sunk in. If I'm being honest, you know, a lot went on. Getting onto the field was one thing. Even being rostered with the team is one thing, and then actually getting out there with, with the guys is another, and being able to make my debut. It's a lot to take in, and I'm still, still going through it. Yeah, it's something you're definitely going to remember for a long time. So let's backtrack. You're from Toronto, which has become one of the uh, hot spots in terms of sports cities. You know, the Raptors won the championship. Uh, the Leafs have one of the best players in the NHL. Uh, Blue Jays have Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is going to become one of the best players in Major League Baseball. But I think the soccer culture is definitely going to increase a lot, you know, with the fact that you guys are hosting the uh, World Cup. Uh, I'm sure you're going to play one day at their unbelievable MLS stadium. What's the soccer culture like for you uh, growing up in Toronto? I mean, it it started out, I actually grew up really close to Toronto in a place called Brampton, where I think the soccer there is pretty big. In Toronto, I wouldn't say it was too big growing up, but it's progressively increased over the years and it's being taken more seriously now, I would say. Yeah, and it's definitely going to be you know, more awesome. I'm sure you're psyched that they got a World Cup bid uh, along with Mexico and the United States to host. Uh, mm -hmm. Stick through what the process of recruiting is like uh, for you uh, being from Canada. I know I went to Providence College, and their soccer team had a lot of players coming from all over the world. I know that happened at probably Maryland as well. Just what was it like to be recruited, and what made you choose Maryland? I mean, it was a, recruitment was a long process. Because at the time, I didn't even know if I wanted to, like, try and just go straight down the pro route or go down the school route. And it's it might be a little more difficult for Canadians. Luckily, I was with an MLS academy, and we were playing in an American league, so I was able to get a lot of exposure that way. Mm -hmm. And then when it came down to it, you know, I just I got a really good vibe. From, from Sasha and the rest of the coaches, Jake and Miles and Scott at the time. I got a really good vibe from them and they had a plan and they had a really good history of players getting into the league and whatnot. So I was able to make my decision to go to Maryland. Yeah, for sure. And like yourself, you know, making your debut, Maryland also had the number one pick this year who you played with, uh, which must have been awesome to share the, uh, ex this past year with. Um, take me through what it was like to make uh, the Big Ten uh, freshman team as you know, like during your freshman year, but also during the middle of a pandemic. Also, it's a lot of adversity to overcome, and uh, especially playing college sports in your first year during a pandemic, it's not easy. Yeah, um, it was definitely tough, you know, coming into college with that pandemic year and like having my fall season canceled. Like, I it gave me actually a little bit more time to gel with the team and and to get a little bit more chemistry in with with those guys over the fall and then in the spring you know we just we hit the ground I hit the ground running and I was scoring I was performing pretty well it came to a surprise that I was actually able to make the freshman team because my season got halted like halfway through with a ankle injury so it was it was a really good accomplishment I think for me to like impact the game so much in the time I had in my freshman year yeah, definitely. You know, and they saw that right away. So what's the student athlete experience like at the University of Maryland? You know, there's so many teams like the one that you played on that are competing for national championships. Lacrosse mm -hmm. just won the national championship and uh, it's a good football culture and basketball as well. But just what's it like being a student athlete there? I mean, I'm always going to say being a student athlete is is not easy at all, including when you have a high expectations of academics and athletics. You know, Maryland's a school, they, they want to win. We wanted to win. So we were going hard at it and training every day. But alongside that, you know, we're taking three, four, five classes at the same time throughout the week. And we really have to keep up with our academics. We can't let one slack because 
you know, the coaching staff is really on us about keeping up our academics as well. Yeah, for sure. So does it make it more special? Like I said, how there's so many good teams that are competing and a lot of teams can win at the highest level. Does it make it more special knowing that they're going through a similar experience as well as you? Because there are schools where, you know, one team really defines the school, but that's not the case in Maryland. I mean, yeah, it shows like that Maryland is, it's a very collective school where every team kind of shares that same aspirations of winning and it's, it's a winning environment. And that's when you're an athlete, that's the type of environment you want to be in. Definitely. So if I have a guest on the podcast, who's played with another former guest of the podcast, I asked what it was like playing with them. I hosted uh, Josh Bulma. Uh, I think it was right before uh, October. Uh, it was a great podcast episode. What was it like playing with him? And uh, what do you think the future holds for, such a great part like that. I mean, Josh Bloom was my guy. I talked to him every once in a while. It, it was great playing with him, getting to meet him. You know, he's a really good player, very elusive. I mean, it was fun having him up beside me on the front line. I mean, he's got a lot of potential, and I think he's going to have a really good fall season this year, and he'll definitely have some GA shouts, I think. That's yeah, my honest. Sure. After watching those highlights this past year, the future is definitely bright. Yeah. So you made the decision to leave school early. Just take me through what the contract process is like. You know, I I know it really well for hockey because a lot of my guests have signed NHL contracts, but I'm not really sure about, about how the MLS works. Oh, it's, it's not that, like, hard to understand in a way. It was kind of just, you know, I had to let my coaches in Maryland know, like, I wanted to – to go on the pro road now and tackle my pro career as early as possible. And they were supportive about it. You know, they believed in me to go. And then it was just about like finding teams that were, that were interested in, in me and saw like I had potential and wanted to sign me. Well, it must be awesome knowing that you made your, your debut relatively fast after the contract. So, yeah. you know, you came from Canada to the United States to play college soccer. I know you were, uh, playing a lot of games in America, though, you know, now you're shifting up to the professional level. What's been the biggest change of play that you've noticed? Is it the physicality? Is it the, the speed? Is it how the ball control or what is it that's different most? I mean, what I noticed, I'll, I would say, like, when it gets to when I go to college, I thought it was much more physical and I had to get a lot stronger to be able to keep up at that level. I would say the difference between like the Canada soccer and the American, they're very similar, including how like Canada's like picked up their youth development and, and their just natural level. Like the level is not very much different. And at some point I think Canada's gonna be seen as equals to the US. Even like right now they're putting up good shouts for it. But the only difference I really saw was the physicality between college and then just like the MLS next pro or the MLS level, you know? Yeah, for sure. And, you know, obviously uh, making your debut, just was it all blur? What was that all like? You know, you finally did it. I mean, I had been dreaming about it. I had been preparing about it since I got told, like, I'd be a part of the roster for the game. I was mentally preparing myself, you know, to have the opportunity. We had two strikers on the field from the first team, and then I was the backup, the third. And it's very possible like these guys wouldn't be able to play 90s. And I don't think either of them had had played 90s that game. So everybody, the coaches are telling me, you know, be ready. Like, this is really a chance that you can get your debut. So I was just preparing myself for that. And, you know, when I heard my name got called to go on the field, I was really excited. You know, like I aspire to just be the best player I can and to play against the best players possible and to get on the field with MLS players. Like these are the top players in, in America that I, I was now going up against, you know? So it really made me happy and lit a fire inside of me. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's got to be rewarding that you're at that level. So I just got to ask, like during the debut, was there, or your first game just being, you know, in an MLS environment, did you see anyone across the field where you're like, oh man, I'm going up against him now? You know, this isn't college. Like, did it kind of hit you seeing someone? I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't say no. I was like, if anything, it's like I'm on the field with Darlington Nagby. 
I'm on the field with, you know, Josh Williams, like these guys on my team who are top, top MLS players, guys who have been to the league. So I think, if anything, that's what I was most excited about. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, you know, after you make your debut, all you want is more and more playing time and uh, playing in those games at the highest level. Uh, Jason, thank you so much for uh, coming on my podcast. I'll definitely be supporting the Columbus crew, and I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yep, have a good one.